<laughs> <laughs> We don't, I don't need to. Hey guys, you're watching Tech Radar. Hello. I'm Basil. And I'm John. And we're sorry we're a bit late to start. We had a few technical gremlins that held us up, but Happy New Year. Hopefully you've had a really, really good one. And we're back, and we're back talking about two phones. We've got the OnePlus 5T, and we've got the Honor View 10. I know this. the title of this is Honor View 10 Hands On Review, but most of the questions you guys were asking about the View 10 What's pertaining to the OnePlus 5T and how the two stack up? Now, the only thing we haven't done is off-screen camera side-by-sides, but John is a firm OnePlus 5T lover, and I've been using this for over a week, so we're in a good position to dupe it out. Um, now, like I said, we have been having a few technical gremlins, so if at any point a microphone cuts out, the internet cuts out, I am all eyes on the live chat, so please let me know, and we'll do our best to sort it out live just a quick one there. It's the British Unknown on you. The British Unknown arrived about an hour early. Yes. So, uh, hey Finley, nice to see you on here and sorry to keep you waiting, especially because you've been waiting a while. Um, but we are here and thank you guys all for wishing us a happy new year. Before we get into these phones, I'm going to do some shout outs as if I need to. We've already had a shout out to the British Unknown, uh, Plamina Astanasova. Um, Eating Legend D-Man, Bukrin, Metsi, um, loads of people, Black Diamond, okay, but, but everyone just wants to know, is a fingerprint scanner, is a camera, is a, you've got questions, and that means you're excited about these products. We've got answers too. We, we do, we do, and we have opinions, and we've probably got some differing opinions as well, so uh, that's why it's a good thing that John is on here. So first up, it's the design, and both of these have the same size screen, six inch screen, with wide full HD, so that's 1080 by like 21 something, yeah. 2160 or something, um, and they are like long devices, but I will concede entirely that the OnePlus 5T, thanks to its curvaceous back, feels a little bit more elegant in the hand. Um, anyone who prefers front fingerprint scanners, you'll prefer the Honor View 10, whereas the OnePlus 5T has a rear fingerprint scanner. So no, it is very easy to reach though. Yeah. Um, I've been using this phone for almost three weeks now, I think, so fully in with the rear facing fingerprint scanner, it's something we're seeing more and more, and that means you do have smaller bezels on the front, which is the new trend yeah. at the moment. Everyone wants all screen, no bezel, um, iPhone X, Samsung's, etc. So if you like that sort of look, then the OnePlus edges it there. Also, the handy little thing with the rear fingerprint scanner, if I slide my finger down, you can get your notification bar and you can slide it back up as well. Really useful because both of these phones are really tall, so stretching your thumb up to the top to pull down can be tricky. Again, on the OnePlus, you can pull down just over the the uh, general home screen to get your notification bar on the other. Whereas this one, it gives you a universal search. And on both phones, you can have the navigation bar have an optional notification bar pull down button. Um, what's nice about the fingerprint scanner on the Honor View 10 is that you can make it gesture centric. So you can actually scrap the navigation buttons all together. So you can have one tap for back, long press takes you home and a right swipe for multitasking. So it, they're both pretty intelligent in their own ways, making the most of where the fingerprint scanners are. Dive placed. into the settings of either of these phones and there are extra things yeah. you can do. You can hide the uh, nav bar when in it, within an app. Um, which I usually use these days, and then you just slide up from the bottom to make it appear to really take advantage of those big screens. Yeah, absolutely. So they are both very, very smart. And in terms of the design, they are both premium. They're metal finished bodies. Neither are IP67 water or dust resistant, but you do have headphone jacks on both, which is a very, very cool thing. Um, so talking around, they're really, really similar actually in terms yeah. of what you've got. Dual cameras with flashes around the back, um, no optical image stabilization on both. There's an SD card slot on the um, View 10, uh, whereas you've just got ample storage on the OnePlus 5 64 or 128. Or 128, whereas in the UK it's just going to be 128 on the View 10. There are some 64 gig versions in other regions, we're not entirely sure what they are, but Maybe in your region, there is 64 gig. Exactly, and six gigabytes of RAM on both, but if you get the one to eight gig, then you will get eight gig of RAM. Huge, eight gig of RAM, which yeah. is just insane. Yeah, really. yeah, like realistically, we're chatting about this. In the real world, you're not gonna notice a difference between the six and eight gigs, yeah. but if you store loads of movies, loads of 4K footage, you may notice a difference between 64 gigabytes of storage and one and two. Especially eight. if you do a lot of video editing or similar practices like that on your phone, which are really intensive yeah. tasks, that extra RAM really helps, but let's say it's a smaller percentage of the population. Exactly, exactly. Um, USB-C's across both, which is good. But 
but they both have got mono firing speakers, so which are mm, yeah, they're okay. This one's loud. I haven't. We don't haven't done this side by side, but it is just too easy to cover up when you're gaming. Yeah. So that's the key thing with that. There's also an infrared remote control at the top of the view tent. It's like it's 2013 or. For over someone again, right? who has lost his TV <laughs> remote control and hasn't replaced his TV in four years, I am very very grateful for the fact. Um, so yeah, and around the back, like I said, dual cameras now. Like generally, I really like how the Honor View 10 feels. It feels premium, but like I said, the curvaceousness, especially if you've got smaller hands, means it does sit nicer in the palm. Nice, yeah. You can very much feel that you're only really gripping each side of the Honor when you hold it. And one, it's similar with this. You do get just a little bit more purchase on the back, which gives you a bit more of a secure hold. Yeah. Um, I have usually been using a case with this as well, yeah. just to give it extra grip because they are both quite slidey, as are all metal and glass-based phones these days. They are, um, and they both come with cases and boxes. And for four hundred and fifty pounds, when you're getting flagship specs with a nice long eighteen by nine screen, the fact you get those value adds really 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 cool um so but generally actually having said that um i do like the blue that's simple <laughs> so the one plus five is available in white and black mm, just black just black just black My there bad. is a lava red in china My bad. um but yeah for everywhere else we've got Black. Uh, there is a Star Wars edition in India. I think that was a limited <laughs> offer. I don't know if that's still available, but they did do that as well. But yeah, for now, it's just the black. OnePlus has had a history of launching colours later on in a product cycle. Soft Gold is one of their favourites. Yeah. That with the 3 and the 3T, they brought out gold versions of those. So we're not ruling out another colour for this, but at the moment you are very limited if you go in 5T. This is blue. Uh, it's available region dependent in multiple colours. Um, I know it's available in uh, yeah. black and various some other region, but I can't be sure. But definitely the blue the is flagship nice. colour yeah. is going to be blue. So let's move on to those screens. And you've got wide full HD screens, and you've got different technologies at the heart of both. You've got an OLED display versus an IPS display. What does that mean, Basil? That means you've got an LCD liquid crystal display, which has really Really, really nice whites, accurate whites, and good viewing angles, but it doesn't have as deep dark colours and punchy blacks or deep dark blacks and punchy colours as an OLED display. Yeah, the OLED just looks more colourful. It's yeah. the long and short of it. If you put them side by side, you'd be like, ooh, the, the screen of the OnePlus 5 looks really nice. We just did a quick side by side camera shot in the studio and the shot on the OnePlus 5D looks better just because the OLED screen is just much more colourful and gives you much more. Oomph, 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 exactly. Oomph, but oomph you, and depth. But you need to really put them side by side yeah. on the computer to really see how the image is properly compared. This is a good IPS display. So for anyone who's concerned about whether they, you know, really budgeted and cut corners with the IPS on here, it isn't a bad one. It's really, really punchy, really saturated. It really is the blacks that give it away. Is it a little bit more power hungry as well? But yeah, so uh, that said, we'll come on to the batteries. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so IPS generally are more power uh, hungry um, because when OLEDs showcase blacks, they don't UK they use as much power. There's a reason that Apple went with an OLED display for its most premium smartphone. Um, we have loads and loads of questions. Yes. In fact, I don't even think I'm going to be able to answer them all. So let me just power through. Is a fingerprint scanner on the View 10 metal, glass or ceramic? I think it is a glass fingerprint scanner. I'm pretty sure of that. Based it's on ceramic the on the OnePlus, if people were wondering. There you go. They did experiment, actually. They told me they experimented with glass and metal as well, but they found that response times weren't as quick, so they stuck with ceramic. Um, what do you guys think about cryptocurrency? I think uh, that's well, off topic. I mean, I think it's a bit <laughs> off topic, but quickly, I think if you're thinking about getting into it now, you're probably a bit late. If you're thinking, oh, this looks like a really easy way to make a lot of money, um, I'd be very, very cautious. <laughs> um, about the V10, does the EIS compensate for the lack of OIS? And how's low light performance? So what's really cool about this, I did a side-by-side -side with the Honor 8 Pro, and this is much, much better, despite not having OIS. Both of, neither of them had OIS. So this is an improvement over its predecessor. It's also better in low light than the OnePlus 5. 
but we haven't done the one plus five t low light side by side so that's something that we do need to do so stay tuned for the channel for that yeah the low light is improved over the five on the five t there are still some camera gremlins one plus has been quite vocal in saying it knows that it could do better with the camera it's working on updates it's going to be a load of updates for it was the oreo update that's rolling out not quite got the oreo update on this phone but they are rolling out now um, so the camera set to improve it where it performs best is outside in sort of yeah. normal sunlight um, you come indoors or you're in a low light situation, things get a little bit more muddy, shutter speed can sort of ham be hampered a bit, uh, and you have to be quite still, steady and patient with your shots. Um, it's not the best just put up and snap, but again, half yeah. the price of some of the phones you may be comparing it to, it's still a very it capable camera, for and it should be be getting better within weeks. What I love about the Honor View 10 is the extent to which you can customize your shot. So if you are someone who just wants to point, shoot, snap, take your picture, you'll probably really benefit from a camera with optical image stabilization. Um, but both of these phones have a lot of options in the settings to slide down your shot speed to get really, really good pictures, even in low light. But for point and shooters, you will really see the difference between an OIS phone, flagship specifically, yeah. like the Galaxy Note 8, the iPhone 10, the iPhone 8, and these phones. Um, but yeah, for me, it isn't that big a deal. I've been able to get some really, really nice, sharp shots. Uh, lots and lots and lots of cat pictures. Look at that one. Aww. So I can actually pinch in um, so that you guys can see. This is like a really, really nice, sharp picture. And it was handheld, um, but at the same time, it just took a little bit more consideration than most shots probably would. Right, let's see what else you guys are saying. Um, it's beautiful the way open source software works. So that's in relation to your comment about the um, Bitcoin, etc., etc. Um, British Unknown, how are the size of the side bezels on the V10? The side bezels are bigger than those on the OnePlus 5T. Do you want to hold it up? But still e it? equally minimal. Right? Yeah. They, they, are, they are slightly wider, but there's, there's really not much going on there. No, any 18 by 9 device is going to be pretty freaking sweet. Um, and these two are no exception. Considering you've got six inches of screen on here, they feel really manageable in the hand. Yeah. Um, so that was the British unknown. No, it's all difference between six gigabytes and eight gigabytes of RAM. Just going to go out and out and say it. Nope. No, <laughs> unless you're doing some crazy video video editing, editing type stuff, stuff uh, which to be honest, there aren't any apps for video editing on Android that I feel like are really amazing to use mm. yet. If anyone begs to differ, please file links in the comments section in the live chat. Um, Venkat, hope OIS is included with this. Nope, no OIS across either device. Um, and I think, oh, can I pick up girls with this phone? I, I wouldn't say ever use a phone to do that what he said um okay anything else anything else now that's pretty much the bulk of the question so far okay great so talked about the design talked about yep. the screen um battery life is always a hot one what's the capacity battery in your phone uh, i think it's 3300 or 3500 but what i do know is it's smaller than yours which is 3750 minus yes. 3300 yeah so you're getting basically what four four fifty million more yeah. but the battery life is still very good on this easily comfortably gets through a full day of usage i'm a relatively moderate to high user uh you can get to about 20 percent left uh if you're if you take usage a bit more easy then day and a half isn't out of the question but pretty much a nightly recharge is still required do you remember what your neon cat thingy score was on that not off the top of my head no. this one dropped to 84 so that's generally Probably respectable. Similar to that, I believe. Um, Definitely wasn't more than twenty percent lost. Yeah. So what with our that was our way of saying that these phones are in the upper echelon of battery performance yeah. out of all the phones, and that's unsurprising because the Snapdragon eight three five, the Kirin nine seventy, these new flagship processors are really nice and efficient, um, and yeah, the, yeah, I'm really really happy. And with they're this. also both driving fewer pictures because unlike the flagships, the full HDs versus yeah, the QHD. Quite, are, yeah. Of the better phones, better phones, more expensive phones, shall we say? So yeah, so battery life, yeah, is, is very good. It's what four o'clock now. I'm on sixty-seven percent. I'm on eighty-four. Um, wow. But 
that's probably because I'm not now, I was, but I'm not now using this as my primary phone, whereas John is. Um, but either way, yeah, these you, will easily see through a day. They both have quick charge, so you've got dash charge versus super charge. They're just names, but that means that you're going to get a full charge in under two hours. You're going to get a day's worth of use in around half an hour yeah. of charge across both. Um, and it really is that point now where these are the only two devices which have hit parity. That £450 mark will get you a flagship experience. There are certain areas where you can be like, oh, this isn't quiet as well. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes the camera is just not as slick or just doesn't where give I you any vibration. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's less like elegant. <laughs> it's more like you type because it's got um, haptic feedback when you type, and it's like. That generally annoys me, I just turn it off. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Whereas other flagships might just be a little bit softer, varying yeah. degrees of vibration. But both really, really good. Interestingly, let's talk about Face Unlock because yes. Face Unlock was a big thing at the launch event with this. But this version that I've got doesn't actually have Face Unlock, but it has got a Face wow. ID feature. What does this mean? Hear me out. So it recognizes your face, but rather than unlock your phone when you look at the phone, mm. it knows it's you. And so it allows for your notifications to be displayed in the lock. So it's iPhone X. Yeah, version. but without the actual unlocking process. So I don't know if that's just because this device isn't out yet and we've got a pre-release version. I'm guessing that's it. But it would be interesting to see if anyone's tried the V10 in China, which has been out for a bit. Um, yeah, I think that one has full face on So what do you have to do at the moment? Look at it, see your notifications and a fingerprint to actually get it. Well, in. You, if you, yeah, if you basically just put your fingerprint on here, yeah. it will unlock the phone. But if you just want to glance at your notifications and don't want to unlock it, it says contents hidden. Yep. And then I look at it and now I see, it yep. shows the actual information about the notifications. So it's smart and it works clearly because it just did, but it doesn't unlock my phone. Whereas unlock here does unlock and it's surprisingly good. So there it is, look at me, unlocked, there we go. I yeah. mean, it is rapid, rapid, fast. And, it, and it's the angles as well it gets you at. If I'm sitting here, it's still doing it. I'm not even looking directly at it, but it knows it's me. It's still unlocking fine. It's very clever. In terms of, our big question is, is it secure though? Will it be able to unlock it if anyone looks at it? we can't guarantee that it is 100% secure and I don't think even OnePlus would go as far as to say that and, no. if you and have, it doesn't work in the dark neither one does do it doesn't work in the dark but uh, something else OnePlus has improved recently with a software update is its low light recognition so it is improving it um, and rarely have I found an occasion where it hasn't worked unless I'm literally lying in bed with the lights off and then just the light from the phone screen isn't enough um, but then you've got the fingerprint scanner as well to, to back you up, so not the end of the world. And it, it definitely has got better between that software update as well from getting it first and then updating the software. It, it, it's impressive. I was really impressed. It's super quick. It recognises you from pretty much any angle. Um, yeah, it works very nicely. The only one which does work in the dark, complete dark, is the iPhone 10 because that's next level, different kind of technology. It's using infrared. Using, exactly. So some greys just said, I wouldn't trust uh, face unlock, face ID. Um, so that's an I interesting mean, one. It, it is, but if someone looks over your shoulder at your face unlock, then they don't, they can't copy your face. But if they yeah. look over your shoulder and get your four-digit pin, then they know your four-digit yeah. pin. So they could just take your phone and go. Bah, bah, bah. So I mean, that is one example. Yeah, maybe you use a longer pin, but you know, someone could look over your shoulder and, uh, and see that again. Fingerprint scanner. Yeah, they can't steal yeah. your fingerprint either. But this is it's it. It's Face another variant of a fingerprint. It's scanner. convenient. It's biometric, kind of, as it's well. It's convenient. I, I, I literally just have to press the wait button on the phone and just go like that, and I'm unlocked, and there's no fumbling for a fingerprint scanner, even though they're not difficult to find. It is, it's all about that convenience. And, yeah, I mm, people say me and my brothers are quite similar. It's not unlocked for them. I, you know, there's only so many tests I can, I can physically do by myself, but... I've not found anyone who can unlock it yet, but you will always hear reports. You know, we've seen iPhone X being unlocked yeah. by children or brothers or siblings or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, there is always going to be an instance where the system gets a little bit fooled, but yeah. you know, is that much difference from someone looking at your passcode as you type it in on the bus and then nicking your phone? Do you think there you go. Um, any stories of burn in on the V10? No. So the V10 has an IPS display. Generally, we don't see burn in on those. It's mainly OLED displays. 
Alapixel 2 LGV30. Um, selfie cameras. So um, the selfie cameras are different. You've got a high resolution front camera on the OnePlus 5. 16 megapixels. 16 megapixels versus 13. They've got the same aperture FT, so you should get a lot of lighting. I've had good experiences with this. So I reckon the OnePlus 5T, in fact, if it's like the OnePlus 5, which it's identical, right? Yes. In that case, I've done a side by side. That's <laughs> sharper in good light. Not always the best thing if you're taking a selfie, but <laughs> it is sharper. Um, but what you do have on the Honor View 10 is you have the most ridiculous <laughs> modes in the world um, when it comes to making you look like a... Yeah, so this is one example. Um, mm -mm. So you've got one example there. And I've also got some videos. So basically the filters, they call them AR filters, but it's really uh, Snapchat type filters. They just look at your face and they um, overlay it with really, really childish fun stuff um, like cupcakes, gingerbread men, and all that good stuff. In short, it's exactly what Snapchat does. Snapchat does. It's just doing it within but the camera. It's a lot more kind of cutesy, kind of Asian pop culture because yeah. All of these on our phones have that, um, but you don't have that out of the box with the 5T. No, um, but if you want that, download Snapchat. Yeah, but you can download Snapchat for all of those <laughs> features. So that's the front camera. Um, when it comes to the power under the hood, I think both of these are just smashing through. Yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna have an issue. You can throw pretty much any app yeah. at them, and they'll just eat it all down. Those exactly. Um, I think this they both score over uh, 170,000 on Antutu, uh, 175,469 on here. And when you've got those kinds of numbers, uh, it's just incredible for that kind of money. So very, very handy that you can get that. Ryan Barkley says hello. Ryan Barkley is a firm and faithful follower, so we will Thanks, give Ryan. him a shout out. Um, and he asks, is it too quick to see notifications on lock screen? And I'm guessing uh, you were talking about face unlock. Yeah, I mean, that is a good problem. Uh, that is a great point to bring up because sometimes I just want to wake the lock screen and look at my notifications. And I can do that if I angle the phone like this and I go, oh yeah, I've got a WhatsApp notification. But as soon as I look at it, you're right. It uh, detects my face and it unlocks. So it is easy to miss them. So that is something that I, I find annoying every now and then when I'm just trying to see the notifications. But something like a compromise OnePlus has done, it's got a raise to wake. So if I just screens off, if I raise it, you get the time and you also get some notification icons. So you get part of the way there. So by raising it, I can see that I've got yeah. a WhatsApp notification. It also gives me my battery life, the date and the time. So useful information. It doesn't use much battery because it's no. just basically black and white on the screen. It's akin to an always on display. I would rather have the flashing notifications. Yeah, okay. And while you've got an always-on display on the Huawei Mate 10 Pro, which has an OLED display, you don't have that on here. Um, so that is one thing which, you know, the OnePlus 5T does have over it. Of course, you don't have to use Face ID. You could opt to not use it and just use the fingerprint scanner, in which case that issue wouldn't arise. Um, but it gives you the options to tailor it to how you want to use it. Face or finger or neither or one or whatever. Exactly, exactly. So when it comes to the rear cameras, you've got dual camera setups across both. They're both going to have high resolution and the second camera is going to give you those background blur options. The Honor is going to be a little bit more versatile. It's going to give you a bit more room to play about, um, specifically with those light trail modes and the manual modes are across both. So OnePlus is definitely in there. Don't think that you're going to get the OnePlus 5T. You're not going to have any of those modes. Um, but things like Pro Video on the Honor uh, V10 give you manual controls in video as well, which pretty much no other flagships have. So if you like your videography, both shoot up to 4K. The fact that I have image stabilization is a bit of a pain point, admittedly. So mm -hmm. if you are gonna shoot video, you may wanna thwack these on a tripod, a gimbal, or something like that. Does that have a portrait mode, Basil? Yes, it does. So does this. So if you're a fan of the portrait mode, you know, that lovely blur background, your yeah. subject in shot doesn't always have to be a person, can be a can of drink, a microphone, you know, a Chewbacca Furby, which may be just off your screen, but you know, who wouldn't want him perfectly in shot with the background um, blur? Um, both of these phones do this at a, a very decent level. Yeah, they do. The dual cameras help. There's a lot of software processing in on the OnePlus, especially uh, the two cameras here actually have the same focal length, so the cameras themselves don't do the depth effect. It's all done digitally, which I was quite 
wary about when I first got it, but actually it does a very good job. Usually the cutouts of the sort of blur between blur and focus is very, very sharp. Can you edit the blur afterwards? Uh, I don't think you can, no. Okay, so that might be one thing that this has. Also, I know that this, uh, the Honor View 10, has the blur background effect on the front camera as well. So that's a nice touch, and I don't think the OnePlus 5T has a portrait mode on the front. It does not. No. It doesn't. So if you like your selfies, you've got a pretty wide angle across both of these cameras, which is good. Um, so I think we're pretty much wrapping up. When it comes to the connectivity, you've got uh, better things on both devices. So you've got newer Bluetooth on the OnePlus version 5T, five. version 5 versus version 4 on here. 4.2. 4.2. Um, <laughs> but you do, like I said, have the IR blaster. It's a USB-C 2 across both. So yeah. not the fastest USB-C around, but still pretty like industry standard. Um, the headphone jacks, GPS, all that good stuff. Yeah. Wi-Fi. NFC. NFC. A quick little charging, no wireless charging on both. No, they no. both have to be plugged in. Yeah. So that's just worth noting. You can get some cheap wireless charging adapters yep. for USB-C devices. Uh, I know Furniture does them, they're the ones that I've been using. Um, but yeah, I'd say generally speaking, for 450 pound devices, both ship with cases, both have flagship power under the hood, both have 18 by nine displays. Whichever one you go for, you're not gonna be getting a bad phone. What's You're not going to be disappointed with the price that you paid, as simple as that. Hell no. Um, I think the key things that might sway you, the storage options on here are better for less. That's on the View 10. 128 gig is standard as opposed to for the high capacity here at least. Um, and it's expandable, whereas neither variant of the OnePlus is expandable. Um, However, the OnePlus has that punchier screen, which yeah. is great if you like to watch a lot of movies or do a lot of gaming. Things just look a bit brighter, better, blacks are blacker. Colourfuls are more complete, um, as we've as we've already discussed, um, and you get a more natural, more pure Android experience. Yeah, that's it a really good point. Does run OnePlus's Oxygen OS, um, which is their overlay, which really gives you lots of extra customization options if you dive into their settings. But on the surface, on a level, it's very sort of pure Android, which is nice for those who who like that rather than on a slightly heavier yeah, Android Yeah, Emotion UI. And also it's worth noting, despite running Emotion UI 8, which is the same version as the Mate 10, Mate 10 Pro, it doesn't have Emotion UI desktop. I tried plugging it in. Neither of these devices have HDMI out functionality. Um, but you will probably get slightly better battery life on the V10 based on the additional capacity and very similar screen and processor demands. So they, I'd say they score, they would, based on my usage of this and that little bit of John's review, which if you haven't read, check out techradar.com. You can also see our video review on YouTube. Mm -hmm. They're really, really similarly rated devices, both high quality flagship type phones at not flagship type prices. Um, and that's been our chit chat about these two. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Once again, have an amazing 2018. Stay tuned to TechRadar. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And TechRadar.com where you can see all the words to go with all of the videos on YouTube. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much. See ya. Bye.